My name is Benaz Farahi. Um, I'm an architect, interaction designer, and I'm doing my PhD in a school of cinematic arts in media arts and practices at USC. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is it turning? Still? This is um, not yours. This thing doesn't work? Okay, never mind. So in the last few years, um, for me the question is how we can imagine the space that it can understand users. And understand users in terms of their bodily gesture, visual expression, and respond to those information accordingly. I came from the world of architecture. For architects and designers, the question is always about the relationship of the human with the built environment. So for so many long, for a long time, it was about um, understanding the bodily proportion and cor correlate those information with designing the artifacts or the built environment. In fact, technology has changed that relationship dramatically. For me, it's really about designing the space in between about the designing a space between our body to the near environments, which creates our second skin, our wearable, and all the way to creating the entire interior space. So it's always about, it's always about creating um, an interactive space that it can become an extension of our body to create a sensuous cocoon. The main inspiration for me, uh, similar to so many designers, is the nature. For me, looking at the nature is not just, just imitating the form from the nature, but understanding the process of adaptation. Living cell in the nature, they move, they merge, they interact with one another. I'm interested to make things alive. Technology can change dramatically the way that we interact with the world. As Andy Clarks put it, uh, we are already cyborgs. Technology is not just changing the, the way that we interact with our surrounding environment, but also it changed the way that who we are, the way that we are interacting with our, uh, with our mobile phone, with our personal devices, it's already made us all cyborgs. On the other hand, in the world of cinema, we've seen this a skeptical view toward technology. It's always showing that technology has this dystopian view that uh, it's going to cause so many problems that humans cannot overcome. From Blade Runner to Space Odyssey to very early on an electronic house that you see that the human cannot overcome the situation and everything goes wrong. AI is terrible. But for me, it really starts about thinking about technology in a more poetic way. I started my... I started my journey from this project to really study how we can have this reciprocal relationship with the environment, how we can shape the environment and environment shape us. The name of this project is Alloplastic Architecture, in which the motion of the user captured by Kinect device and um, various information basically triggered the different motion of the structure. It's really about how we can have this reciprocal relationship, how we can shape the environment and the environment shape us. The next project was um, thinking about the architectural uh, uh, space. One of the elements of architectural space is a wall. I started thinking to, to see how, what are the ways that we can interact with the wall. What if you can talk to a wall? What if you can share your um, words with the wall and the wall can also respond back and basically um, share the common, ex common expression with you? Uh, what if, if you are sad and you go home and you express to your wall that you are sad and your wall can respond to that e expression and also share the, uh, share the common expression? So I did install this wall, which was 8 feet by 12 feet wall, out of um, 60 modules of actuation, which was all actuated with shape memory wire, which is uh, a memory wire that it can uh, contract and expand based on the heat, uh, all controlled with the microcontrollers, 
and basically use the device Kinect to capture both the motion of the performer and as well as the speech recognition of the performer. So as she basically trigger different words such as sadness, happiness, or wake up, or excitement, these words can basically trigger the different sort of texture in the surface of the wall. Anyway, I'm going to go to the next project. The next project was another series of walls. I was very much interested to explore what if we interact with the wall the same way that we interact with other people. Similar to the main character in Minority Report, Tom Cruise, what if you can control things with a gestural interface? Remotely, you can control things outside your body uh, with your basically a gestural interface, such as the way that you maybe interact with your phone, like swiping, dragging, tapping. What if we can use those sort of gestural interface to... Uh, sorry? To interact with, uh, with the wall. Again, this project um, used um, a similar proportion of the wall using a spandex uh, a stretchable fabric that it can form and deform the surface based on the various information that it's captured by the leap motion that it can basically detect your hands movement. So in real time, the motion of the, 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 the different gestural hand motion detected and various sort of motion or formation in the surface, uh, surf, surface of the wall is happening. I try to use uh, some of the basically the way that we interact with our phones like tapping and by basically tapping in different parts of the wall you can basically control and sculpt the form and part of the reason that I was interested to do that is to, 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 to give this uh, opportunity to audience and participant basically to um, generate the forms or sculpt the form with their hands at, as they are interacting with the piece during the exhibition. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next project. So, these are some of the photos. Um, so, my work is not just limited to architectural space. A um, couple of months ago, I have been approached by a Dutch fashion designer, Pauline van Dungen, and um, we both decided to work on a 3D printed dress, um, which uh, we have this, both this vision that how the outfit can be alive and uh, respond to um, surrounding environments. We had three weeks of intense collaboration at 3D System Studio located in Will.i.am Studio and we had the most amazing time there because first of all the first day we realized that um, the 3D print that we were using, um, the material that we were using, it was extremely fragile. So whatever we were printing, it was extremely breakable with, with a single pressure. So what we realized, uh, we, 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 were, we were thinking about the motion and designing the motion with uh, 3D print and thinking uh, how we can do this. So we started experimenting with 3D printing various shapes and various geometry. We realized that when we 3D print in a spiral fo form, 
it's actually extremely resilient and it's not breaking in any way. And also it's enabling extreme contraction and expansion. So we realize that our form, form um, that we're gonna go for is gonna be a spiral form. Then I start exploring with this um, topology of form that what the spiral can look like and how we can think about the properties of the material as well as the formal expression of the um, geometry. Then experimenting, so our process was highly um, iterative and hands-on and um, basically experimenting with these 3D printed objects, placing them in different parts of the body. Again, we used a muscle wire or shape memory alloy to actuate different parts to basically create this notion of lifelike uh, organic um, outfits. This is the video uh, which was a collaboration with a great friend of mine, um, director and filmmaker Nicholas Cambier. It was really about how we can generate this lifelike dress. What well, maybe the future of a wearable is really about the notion of how our wearable can become alive, can uh, communicate different meanings to, to others. The next project that I'm very excited to show is Synapse, which I didn't know the name is actually similar to Synapse of a project by Anouk. Um, uh, so this is a 3D printed helmet that it can respond to the brain activity. Um, so basically this, this helmet, it moves and responds to the information capture from brain. Um, I captured a various information such as attention level, uh, meditation level, and so many other information from the brain. And what I did, I basically mapped the attention level to the motion of the helmet. In a way, as you think more, the helmet goes up, and as you think less, the helmet comes down and creates a cocoon around your head. The notion behind this project is really thinking about how we can blur our boundaries of body. What if, if we can control something out of our brain, does that mean that that object is part of our body? Does that mean that part, part, that is extension of our body? So really playing with this notion that um, how we can blur our um, boundaries of body. These are, again, very iterative process. These are like um, experiments that I did with 3D print uh, Connex 500 when I was um, working in a company called Autodesk. Uh, up in San Francisco, and uh, really um, thinking about how we can design an object which is both soft and hard. So basically thinking about a distribution of the material in a way that it can create a system that it can flex, that it can contract and expand. So the logic of the structure of the helmet was a mix of so soft and hard material enabling the motion for the helmets. And this is the video, which I don't want to talk So I basically hacked to a device called MindFlex uh, for this project and connect that, totally reconfigure the whole thing and connect it to this 3D printed object in order to capture uh, the brain activity from the, from the user. Um, to wrap up, I really wanna share um, Basically, for so long, it's been this skepticalism about the use of technology. And as so many people still want maybe to think about technology as a source of alienation, I truly think that technology 
it's actually one more time connecting us with the world and with, the, with, our, with our surrounding environments. It can enable the environments to understand us, to um, adopt to us, uh, and have this reciprocal relationship between us and the built environments. And I think interactive systems and, and technology and AI is definitely uh, going to do that. For me, the next step is really to create an Im immersive, an entire immersive space that um, it's become this ecosystem of our wearable to foreign environments that it can create the entire space and all of them, they can, they're interconnected and um, maybe all of them, they can track our thoughts or our brain um, activities and based on that, we can control the entire environments. Thank you very much.